Hi everyone. In the second video of uh, minimal surface workflow, uh, we'll be looking at kangaroo relaxation techniques. Uh, for this one, uh, you should complete the first uh, tutorial, which is about parametric mesh generation. And in this one, though, I'll be showing you additional ways of generating meshes uh, that uh, we can use for uh, kangaroo relaxation simulation. Um, so for this exercise, uh, we'll be looking at the new subdivision tools in uh, Rhino 7 and we will be developing uh, meshes using curve networks. So there is a nice tool, a uh, utility tool here under subdivision tools uh, called um, multipipe. And when you multipipe a geometry, uh, it actually allows you to set uh, some radius and you can leave its uh, open ends and it will give you uh, kind of a mesh geometry that you can use for uh, surface relaxa relaxation simulation. Um, there are a bunch of ways of actually uh, using this geometry. One way is to uh, convert it to uh, subdivision geometry and then you can actually develop this into a quad mesh. Um, so if you select this and go here to quad remesh tool, uh, there are a bunch of ways you can actually uh, target the output here. For instance, you can do a target edge length or target quad count. Um, for instance, if we enter a target edge length, then what happens is if we have a longer branch, then uh, this will lead into a mesh um, that is uh, equally subdivided using a distance threshold. And then uh, we can use this as an input uh, for our kangaroo relaxation. Um, so the way the kangaroo works is you actually input this mesh. Um, we don't need to do additional subdivision for this one. Let's disconnect it. So if I input it here, um, what we need to do is, um, let's actually hide it, disable the simulation. So what we need to do is extract its naked points first. So the naked points will be the points uh, on the open ends and they will be these open faces. And what we want to do is actually make them anchored. So they will be our anchor points. And um, we will use uh, springs from the mesh geometry itself. And once we do uh, the kangaroo relaxation, this will actually generate a minimal surface computation. So this is the geometry um, that I got. Uh, let's look at the output. So we get something like this. Uh, so the, the ends uh, will be fixed of this geometry, but the inner surfaces will be computed uh, using physics uh, simulation. Uh, one other thing that we can do is to manipulate the input a bit. For instance, um, I'm using these curves here and we can actually do, um, let me actually hide the additional geometries. Uh, we can actually do, um, you, can, you can have any type of uh, curve network in Rhino. Uh, but let's say that these have uh, different directions or different lengths and we want to actually um, make sure that they are uniformly uh, distributed. So we need to first do a kangaroo relaxation along the curves themselves. So we can uh, actually input them into our code. Um, let me actually see which one we can use. So let's use this one. Um, we can actually input it our, in our code. And then using the anchor points at the ends of these curves, we can actually uh, first compute the uh, curve network configuration. Uh, I forgot to input this one as well, so let's do that again. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight open-ended curves. So um, the ordering doesn't matter actually, but you can see that um, based on um, kind of an average length parameter, we can actually differentiate um, between the input and the output, right? So we, we are basically getting a more um, uh, curve network that is that has the same length uh, threshold. And if you use this uh, output to compute um, the tubes, then what happens is that you don't actually need to use um, the quad tool here, you can actually just uh, subdivide the input so that you would have, um, I mean, the, these lengths will be uniformed. So um, you don't need to actually compute by distance. 
So you can choose this, do a pipe radius, let's set it to be 12. And what I do, he, here is a nice trick. Um, you can actually do uh, toggle this to be a quad like this. Um, then let's make a copy of it and take this input. And before we um, input it to, um, to Grasshopper, we can actually change the radius of these, uh, these open ends. And one thing we could also do is we can mesh it uh, with the fewer polygons and that will actually convert the subdivision into a topology like this which is really helpful for the kangaroo and um, then what I do is uh, we can actually choose the um, uh, actually we had to we had to mesh it I think afterwards let me see uh, right now this is actually an open mesh yeah I mean the, the scaling these will be a bit more trickier so let me go back to the stage and then if you go to sub D tools, select the edge loops and you can double click and select these edge loops. And then if you click on this white circle here, you can align it to the object itself. So that will be, um, uh, the gumball will be actually aligned to the geometry itself. Right now, um, it doesn't seem like it is perfectly aligned, but some of the planes are actually fitting nicely. Um, let's say reset. Um, relocate gumball probably we have to input it but let's say we do align to object I mean this this is okay actually what, what we could do is you can just scale it up a bit so that opens up that face and you can keep doing it for these additional uh, loops as well so I can grab this one set it to align to object and then holding shift I can scale this face up and I'm going to do it on a bunch of um, these surfaces, uh, these uh, these open faces. So let's scale this one too. Uh, this is actually moving it. Let me see. Um, this is aligned to object. Let's scale it up. Yeah. So I basically enlarge these so now when I mesh it um, this is the input geometry I have so the the reason why I'm extending these uh, radius is because I want these to be fixed to larger uh, openings let's say and in this phase we can actually input this mesh keep in mind that this quad mesh is not subdivided so we need to first do um, a weaver bird catmull clark subdivision and that will give us uh, more quads. And this will be a suitable um, input for our kangaroo relaxation. So I'll, I first set it to be true. And then when I hit uh, false, that actually relaxes uh, my mesh. And this would be uh, my output. So you can do a lot of um, cool mesh relaxation um, simulations like this you can see that opening these faces also creates a kind of nice aerodynamic forms um, so um, basically from curve to um, to to subdivision meshes then to um, regular meshes and subdividing it further in kangaroo and feeding it to uh, feeding it to the relaxation algorithm we can actually get uh, a lot of cool organic uh, forms that uh, we can use for uh, a lot of uh, a lot of purposes, like for um, for artistic modeling or for um, uh, joinery uh, modeling as well. Um, so I hope this was uh, helpful. Uh, as I said, you can also do um, a lot of um, modification to the input by um, anchoring the input curves to these corner points and then looking for a kind of a relaxed curve network and then uh, meshing it in the sub D tool and then feeding it off to the kangaroo relaxation. So I hope you like this one. Uh, in, in the next video, we will be looking at uh, how we can extract strips uh, from these uh, surfaces um, so that we can actually um, build these cool forms. Um, so if you like this content, um, please subscribe to the channel and hit like on this video and I'll see you in the next one um, with the minimal mesh uh, workflow. 
uh, thanks for watching